Okay, we're back at our uh, Mercedes-Benz, and what we're gonna look, take a look at now is the process or the steps to actually check to see if there's anything wrong with the airbag system. Obviously, this car isn't damaged, but we're gonna pretend for this particular um, portion that the car's hit in the front, uh, light hit. So now we wanna go ahead and we wanna take a visual inspection of the interior of the car, and we see that no airbag, uh, 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 no airbag modules have deployed currently but that doesn't mean that there's still not a problem with the system. So what we need to do is check the um, system itself. It does a, every airbag system in every vehicle does a system check, uh, self-diagnostic test. Let's go inside the vehicle now and do a couple of electronic tests to see if there's any diagnostic trouble codes or any issues with the vehicle. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit in the passenger seat, and this is two reasons. One, keep me out of the driver's airbag way in case there uh, is a malfunction the airbag deploys, which 99% of the time won't happen. But I'm also here to test the passenger airbag disable system. So I'm going to place the key in the ignition, I'm going to start the car. SRS light should flash on a couple of times and then obviously go out. That's telling me the system's good. Additionally, in the center console over here in the middle area, is the passenger airbag on off light. In this case, it'll say off if the system's off. If the light's not illuminated, then that's telling me the system's operational. In this case, it's off currently. If I lift my body weight off the seat and I wait a second or two, what'll happen is the light will come back on again. That's letting me know the system's now realizing I'm on the seat and I'm off the seat, telling me the system's working uh, properly. This is not a replacement for doing the diagnostic uh, uh, search of the car with some sort of diagnostic tool or StarTech tool from Mercedes-Benz or a uh, universal tool from any other company. I'm going to shut the vehicle off. Our next step is to check the seat belts. Two things we're going to do with a seat belt. I'm going to check the seat belt system visually. First thing we're going to do is we're going to unravel the seat belt out of the retractor all the way. We're going to listen for any abnormal noises. I'm now going to let the seatbelt go back in and retract. And I'm also going to, at the same time, look at the webbing to make sure there's no pull marks, no burn marks, and no damage to it. At this time, you want to look for any rips or tears to the seatbelt webbing, any burn areas or friction marks. Additionally, you want to listen and hear a smooth sound, nothing broken on the inside of the retractor. The next thing we want to do is we want to do a thump test. You'll pull the seatbelt about halfway out, grab it with your hand, and yank, and it should lock up and stay locked up unless I release tension. I grab it again, and it should lock up. That's basically a thumb test to let you know that the pendulum system, uh, the locking system inside the seatbelt is working properly. The last thing I would like to do is take the tongue, which is this chrome piece or this locking area, and I want to put it into the retractor. After putting in the retractor, just give a quick little tug to make sure it's locked in properly. Obviously release it and it'll swing up against the pillar again. The idea here is, is to make sure that the seatbelt locks properly, that the seatbelt is also uh, um, using its system to, with the pendulum to lock up properly. Additionally, you also want to check the height of the buckle to make sure it's not compressed or collapsed. You can check both sides. Some seatbelts, there's no reason to check it because it's just a metal bar that comes up. If you see an accordion-like area surrounding the outside of the seatbelt buckle, you might want to go ahead and then check that also to see if it's collapsed or not. And obviously, checking with the manufacturer's operating statement to see if it does have a compressible uh, buckle assembly. Now that we've finished this one area to check this seatbelt. We're going to go around now and check the rest of the seatbelts is what the normal procedure would call for. There's three seatbelts in the back and one seatbelt on the driver's side. So we have four more seatbelts to check out. On a lot of vehicles nowadays, they make the back seatbelts lock up automatically. So don't be surprised if a vehicle's hit lightly in the front and you open up the back door and you wind up seeing that 
Uh, two of the three seatbelts in the back are locked up, or all three seatbelts are locked up and pressed tightly against the uh, upper seat cushion. Most child safety seats involved in a collision, regardless if a child sitting in the seat or not, will require replacement. And for your own safety, I wouldn't replace it. The insurance company generally will pay the consumer to replace their own seat. And unless you're certified to install child safety seats, it's not worth you taking the risk of the liability for it. After you're done checking all the seat belts, uh, you should do a diagnostic scan. Even after you're done repairing the car and even if the airbag lights out, there's some history codes that might be held inside the computerized system. So more than likely, you're probably gonna have to send the vehicle to the uh, um, dealership uh, your local dealership uh, for that manufacturer to get the uh, system cleared, scanned, or even checked to make sure it's working properly. Some aftermarket or third-party uh, computer systems will allow you to do it, but in some cases, um, you're going to have to send it to the dealer.